Just 80,000 customers were affected. That means probably around 320,000 people. And in 07, again, about 175,000 75, customers uh, were affected. In that year, in 07, when I was the president of the commission, and we sat down uh, in, in, in the summer of that year and went through the EWP budget. Jeff Calzolo, who is here with us, is actually the budget director, so he noticed that in 06 and in 07, the commissioner, this is a volunteer commission, sat down and for five days in each case, we submitted the DWP budget to the most intense review I think anybody could imagine for five days. And we did it again in 07. At the end of that period, at the end of five eight-hour days of going through that budget, line by line, we concluded that there was no way that we were going to be able to make the necessary investment on, on this. We came to the people of LA and asked for great advice. Um, I wrote an op-ed in the in LA Times about this issue, talking about our infrastructure problems and the fact that we would need to inject additional money in order, in order to deal with the problem. When, uh, after that summer, in about October, I think, we went to the City Council without any package. The City Council wasn't satisfied, should be, and decided to commission its own report, known as the Hero Report, to double check what IEA had said, what EPRI had said, what a Barrington Wolski report had said in the meantime. Uh, which was uh, that, you know, to ask whether the rating pieces we were asking were justified. Huron concluded the data and made a report to the city council that these rating pieces were necessary. Huron agreed with all of the rating pieces that we were asking for. The city was still not satisfied and decided to send the entire package to, back, to the, back to the commission for additional review. So back it came with 11 questions, all of which we responded yeah. to. But as a result of that, of the package yeah. getting referred back to us, we did make certain adjustments. Mm -hmm. We have done a power reliability program, we made certain requirements in that to make sure that the most urgent trouble spots got dealt with first. Uh, we had a power restructured program that I'm going to talk about to you in a second because it affects the land, uh, which we decided to hold back because it just wasn't right. We decided to expand our low-income discount and our lifeline discount so as to ensure that our low-income and lifeline customers wouldn't be impacted by the rate increases that we were, what we were asking. At the end of all of that, we sent it back to the City Council, which again submitted it to additional review by the CLA and the CAO's office. And the CLA and the CAO also agreed that these rate increases are necessary. And you are necessary because we have to make essential investments. The signs of a deteriorating infrastructure were all around us. Nobody can deny that we have the infrastructure that on the water side is 100 years old, on the power side is 70 and 80 years old. We see it when a manhole cover just seems to blow up. Uh, you didn't see it. That's a lot of it. We see it during summers of outages that we all have to suffer. We see it sometimes in even more tragic circumstances. And we have another song around the corner that we're all going to have to break through. So, after I think a great deal of scrutiny, many questions, a number of times of going back to the city council, after something like 30 outreach meetings with the neighborhood council, uh, finally, uh, last Wednesday or the Wednesday before, I forget now the days kind of blur into each other for these days, uh, the city council agreed. I have to tell you that we had the support of the LA Chamber of Commerce uh, that supported the rate increases, provided there was oversight to make sure that the money would be spent as promised. We had the support of Biden, which again conditioned the support on adequate oversight. We had the, con we had the consent of the Los Angeles Business Council as well. And we had the approval of any environmental groups to understand that we've got to take care of the very backbone of the system first in order then to move towards green the utility, which is, which is of course one of my, one of my personal priorities. So that's, that's where we are. And, uh, and I wanted to come out and, and, and talk about that and explain the genesis of the race pieces and the need for that. And that doesn't mean that we don't have many other things that we have to, of course, 
And I'm not saying that we will run down at the end of the EWP every single piece of inefficiency that they're making here. This is a large organization after all. But our parts are in the right place. And we're trying to do the right place. And if we don't make those investments today, it will only mean that they will become all the more difficult and all the more expensive and all the more painful in the future. No incoming general manager, and I've been in this job as GM now for three months, no incoming general manager would want to come in and ask for rating right? increases. This is not exactly a politically popular thing. Right? So why am I doing that? Why would I do that? Why would I put myself through you know, an excruciating process? Sidonia has told me here that she saw me on TV and felt sorry for me. <laughs> because because of the kind of because of the kinds of grinnings that I was getting from the city council right now. I don't mind. I don't mind at all. That's our democracy, that's our process. It's the right thing to do. And and this is why this is why I, I asked for the reason. This is why I'm very happy that we attained it. And I think it's now incumbent upon us as the Department of Water and Power to fulfill those promises. And there's going to be plenty of oversight. There's going to be I think at least three oversight committees. One of the city, a citizen's oversight committee, and the low income oversight committee. Listen, listen to this for oversight. And this is what the Department of Water and Power as a municipal utility has in terms of oversight. First of all, there are five commissioners who right, have oversight. Then there's the mayor's office. Then there's the budget committee of the city council. Then there's the energy and environment committee of the city council. Then there are the 15 city council members. Then there are 78 neighborhood councils. Now we have three oversight committees, and of course, there is every single the, the, the one of the 45 million Angelinos. Each one of them is an absolute expert on everything to do with water and power. <laughs> now, I know this because they express this expertise to me just about every now and then. You know, people come up to me and press my hand very sincerely. Those who are in favor of the rate increases will say things like, and this is what a gentleman said to me the other night. We all, we all want to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. <laughs> and, those, and those who are against the, the, the rate increases will, of course, have other sentiments that they want to express. <laughs> um, but I found, I found that, I, that as I go around the city and I, and I try to talk to people in a plain way about what it is that we face and what it is that we have to do, I find so many people come up to me and they say, you know what? If only we'd understood that. If only we'd known this is how the transfer works. If only we'd known this is how the energy cost adjustment factor works. If only we'd known what it is that we're trying to do with the support. So let me stop there and uh, let me answer your questions and then we'll get into talking about energy efficiency and whatever else you want to do. We can't hear you, Wayne. Okay, let me, let me, let me repeat the question. Here's how, here's how the question works, because it's, it's counterintuitive and it moves an explanation. The question is, if you're telling this to conserve, which is, which is a major focus of the Department of Water and Power, this is what we're doing, by giving out CFLs, by having a refrigerated exchange program, by, by restructuring the rate. So that, so that those who use power in a, in, a, in a second tier will pay more for that power than those who use less. By doing all of that, we're sending a very strong conservation message. So, but as we do that, it means that all the power of nature is less. Uh, and at the same time, we're saying we want to raise wealth. Here's how that equation works. First of all, if you use less, it means that we have to produce less. If we produce less, it really, that in, in and of itself will bring our costs down. Plus, we're worried about future loan for the city. We're worried about the amount of growth in the, in the city tonight. So, so we want to you know, make sure that there's a conservation mentality and sufficient price savings out 